All right, so let's review one of the problems from the rewind because it's been a while since we've done this one. So let's take a look at number three. Number three says, at a store, a $40 pair of jeans is on sale for 30% off. How much will the jeans cost after the discount? So we're talking about a discount problem. Discount problem means you should be paying more or less for the jeans at the end. Good, you should be paying less for the jeans at the end because you're getting a discount. So at this store, the jeans cost $40 and they were on sale for 30% off. So what's the first thing that we need to do? The first thing is we're gonna need to multiply, but before we can even multiply with a percent, we have to change it into a decimal. So what decimal is 30% equal to? And 30% is equal to 0.30 or 0.3. And we're gonna do 0.3 times 40 because that's the cost of my jeans. So I end up with 120 and I move my decimal over once because I have one number behind it. You could also do it as 40 times 0.30. It's the same thing, you just end up with another zero and you end up having to move your decimal over twice because there's two numbers behind it. But either way, you should end up with the answer 12. So 12 is the discount, but the question says, how much will the jeans cost after the discount? So what should you do? Exactly, we wanna subtract. So we're gonna do 40 minus 12. I don't need the decimals anymore because neither of my numbers have them and I end up with 28. So the jeans at the end cost $28 because I got a discount of 30% off. So my discount is 30% off, which results in a discount of $12 when I multiply. And when I subtract that, I find that the new cost of my jeans is $28. Okay, so we're gonna begin with chapter three talking about inequalities. So chapter three is all about inequalities. So far in chapters one and two, we've been talking about equations which involve an equal sign. We're not gonna have any equal signs here. We're just gonna have inequality symbols. They act just like an equal sign. They would be in the same spot that you would see an equal sign. So for instance, where we might see something like this before, 3x is equal to 18, now we might see something like this, 3x less than 18. All right, so that is an algebraic inequality. And we have four different inequality symbols that we're looking at. And they are the less than symbol, which is right here, a is less than B, they are the greater than symbol right here, which says A is greater than B. This is A is less than or equal to B, and this says A is greater than or equal to. So when you see that line underneath it, what that means is greater than or less than or equal to. So I'm going to say this one is less than or equal to, all right, which means that it is either going to be less than b or it could possibly be equal to b, as opposed to the first two right here. These first two have to be either less than or greater than, they cannot be equal to, all right? So an inequality is a statement that two quantities are not equal. So we're not saying that they're equal to each other, we are saying that they're either greater than or less than. So we're basically comparing instead of saying that things are equal. So then let's talk about some possible solutions for the following inequality. So let's take a look at our first one here. We have a symbol that says x is less than nine. The way that I remember this is the less than symbol. This one looks kind of like an L. It looks more like an L, so we would say x is less than nine. Some people like to say things like the alligator eats the bigger number. So if you, or Pac-Man, some people think of it like Pac-Man. So if you think about the symbol like a mouth, you want the open side facing the larger thing. So nine, this basically means that nine is bigger. So then X must be smaller. So we say X is less than nine. So what are some values that would make this inequality true? X is less than nine. I'm gonna put like three examples up here. So eight would make it true. One would make it true. Negative 52 would make it true. Also, 8.99999 going on forever and ever would also be true because that is smaller than nine. What are some things that would make number two true? So number two says negative three is greater than X, which means that X is which one, the bigger or the smaller? So X should be the smaller number. So I'm essentially asking myself, okay, 
x is all the numbers that are smaller than negative 3. x is less than negative 3. So all the numbers that are smaller than negative 3 would be things like negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. This one can be a little bit tricky because people forget that negative numbers, as they get smaller, the number itself without the symbol is actually getting larger. So 4 is larger than 3 if it were positive, but because it's negative, it's smaller. So picture a number line in your head, and it's all the stuff that's smaller than 3. So all the stuff that's left of negative 3. The other way you can write this, because typically you're going to see an inequality with the variable on the left side. In this case, it's on the right. You can always flip it. Just make sure that you flip your sign as well. So if you move the x to that side, then it goes from being a greater than symbol to being a less than symbol. All right, sometimes it's easier for people to answer these if they have the variable on the left side. The last one down here, number three, is actually an inequality that involves some algebra. But when I look at this, what are some things that you could plug in for x that would make this true? So 10 plus x is less than 20. I've got the smaller side right here facing the x. That means that should be smaller. So I need this side on the left to be smaller than 20. So what are some things I could add to 10 that would still be smaller than 20? So I could add 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 9. 0.99999 repeating. As soon as I make it 10, 10 plus 10 gives me 20. That's no longer less than 20. So it needs to stay smaller than 20. So the biggest number it could be would be 9.9 .9 repeating. Often inequalities have too many solutions to list. So we listed some on the previous slide. But I don't want to make you guys sit and make a list of all the numbers it could be. Because if we go back to this, when I said x is less than 9 and I said, well, I've got 8 and 1 and negative 52 and 8.999, that's not exhaustive. Exhaustive meaning, like, that's not the entire list. I have a ton more numbers that would fit in there. In fact, there's infinite more numbers that I could put in there. So I don't want to have to make a list of all those because that list would take me forever. So instead, we model them on a number line. We graph them on a number line. So inequalities with two that have too many solutions to list, which is all of them, we graph the solutions on a number line. So we're going to talk about how to do that. So we'll start with the blue one, which says x is, great, is less than 8. So x is less than 8. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put a circle at 8. So I go to 8, and I draw a circle, and then I know that x is less than that, so all the numbers smaller than 8. So then I just highlight the line going this way, because it's all the numbers that are smaller than 8. Now people always want to say like, oh, the arrow points to the left, so I know I go to the left. And that is a good way to remember it as long as your variable is on the left side. If your variable is on the right side, it's going to go the other way. Because for instance, if we wrote this as 8 is greater than x, this would still be the correct graph because x is all the smaller numbers, because the small side is pointing towards the x. But it, the arrow is actually pointing to the right. But the arrow in the graph should go to the left. So just be careful with that. If the variable is on the left side, like it is right here, then you can use the symbol to tell you which way to go. If it's not, like down here, then you can't use the symbol to tell you which way to go. So just be very careful with that. OK, I'm going to erase this one. And then I'm going to do the green one, which says x is greater than negative 4. So we put our circle at negative 4. And then we say x is greater than negative 4. So it's all the stuff bigger. So our arrow should be going to the right. And we put an arrow on the end to indicate that it goes on forever and ever and ever and ever. So all the numbers all the way up to positive infinity that are bigger than negative 4. What is different about the red one? So the red one looks a little bit different because the red one has this or equal to symbol. 
The only thing that changes is on your graph, instead of doing an open circle, we do a closed circle because what this means is x could technically be negative 4. So instead of putting an open circle, I color it in. So x could be negative 4, and then it's all the stuff that's greater than that. So again, we're going to go to the right because it's all the stuff that's bigger. And we know it's bigger because that open mouth is facing the x. So x is all the bigger stuff. And bigger on a number line means we go to the right. So as numbers get larger on a number line, we're moving to the right. All right, so at your boards, I would like you to graph all nine of these. So do all nine of them. Remember, it's an open circle if it's less than or, equal, or, less than or greater than. And it is a closed circle if it has that underline, that greater than or equal to or less than or equal to.